Hello everyone, this is Vor from Sketchpunk Labs and I'm here to do a second video about um, Shader Blocks, the new open source project of mine to basically create um, a Shader Forge like application on the web so you can kind of visually create a uh, shader code. Um, the first video is really kind of just a proof of concept, I just wanted to introduce it and here is really the first progress video of uh, development of that application. And here we go, I'm gonna go quickly demo some new things. Um, as you can see, there's a brand new UI. There's actually a new UI now uh, with user input and everything else. And it's built similar to um, Shader Forge. So just like Shader Forge, we have previews on certain nodes. So if I double click on um, UV, uh, it'll actually run the code and generate the preview code to actually do it. Um, you'll see over here that there's something else over here. This is really my uh, WebGL rendering um, canvas. And you can't do multiple canvases. Uh, you can do multiple uh, WebGL canvases. But for every canvas you create, you have to create shaders for that one and a quad for that and everything else. So one thing I built for this is that I'm going to build basically a, a render queue, which is not done yet. But this is like a simple render, well, one, a simple render queue where this will render WebGL code and then copy the results over to a 2D canvas, which apparently works very well. So I can do previews and do final outputs. So this is what UV looks like, and this is basically what you, you see in Shader Forge when you use the UV node. So we could con do connections. Uh, the connections now animate, uh, so you kind of see the progress uh, uh, or the, the flow. Um, we have uh, different ver versions of um, Connectors. Now the connectors are a lot more intelligent. Again, like Seder Forge. I'm sorry, I'm such a ripoff. Uh, uh, and and like I said, you all you have to do is double click to start it up. At some point, I'm gonna have to do it in like an auto thing. But uh, here it is. So here's what the noise looks like, and it generates the code. So you can kind of see what that preview code looks like. Uh, again, I go to the next step. You see, it kind of um, smooths things out a bit. And then the final output is red because it's in the red channel. Um, so yeah, you can do you can do a whole mess of things. Um, like for example, if I want to just switch it around, uh, I want to use the that. I'm going to multiply the U. I'm going to add. Uh, actually, you know what? I need to show you something else. Uh, something else. I forgot. Um, so let me double click on that. Here's the source code, right? This is the source code that generates. Uh, let me do this. There we go. That'd probably be better. Uh, so here's the source code that it generates. And you see it duplicates the noise uh, 2D and smooth step. And no, you know, it duplicates it. So what I can, what you can do now in this version, I can double click on the top, say S step, refresh. Now it creates variables. So you can, um, if you if you don't set a variable, it kind of just uses the, the what you call it, uh, you know I don't know, it just uses the actual syntax that the node generates. But if you give it a name, not all nodes give names like this one shouldn't support it, because uh, you can't change it because that's kind of um, a global variable. Um, but other things you can do, like I can t you know if I wanted to use noise again, give this a name, and refresh now n is its own step and then it, it makes it a lot easier and more efficient to do things like that so so now you can make more efficient um, GSL code um, visually just by turning nodes into variables <coughs> you can and like I said now I'm going to take the the UV I'm just taking just the uh, the, the U channel swap these around Let's see, put a, some var, this is just a value. Um, so that makes a variable, but if I want to reset it and make it into uh, just like a hard-coded value, there you go. So now it's no longer a variable anymore. Now it's a hard-coded value that gets placed into there. Um, let's see, go UV goes into there. Let's see. It looks like what the preview looks like. So that's what it looks like now that I dis I swatch things around. I I went f uh, into like kind of a, like a bar noise uh, in here. I smooth it out. If I want, I can change the smoothing quite a bit. Let's change it to like 
like that. So there's a little bit of smoothing. Uh, maybe do eight. All right. Uh, and there you go. And if I want, I can add maybe noise to this channel. Or maybe I wanted to add it to this channel. And uh, you end up creating a bunch of different effects. And um, so far, so good. And um, this is the, the final fragment shader code that actually generates this texture. And this is all web-based, and um, it's, go it's all open source. Uh, everything is on GitHub right now. And um, you guys can have at it and do some fun stuff. It's like, like I said, it, since the last video, it's done quite a, a lot of code has changed. There's a, there's a big overhaul. Um, the GL context has been replaced. I'm not using um, Fungi anymore. I'm using a version called Fungi Mini. Um, yeah, there's a lot of backend changes. So this, the code is a lot more cleaner. The only things, uh, the only the last steps I really need is uh, like I'm an event, event system to alert the, the nodes when they got connected or disconnected. So this way I make it easier to kind of auto generate the um, the previews when I know, and, and same thing with the um, inputs. So if the inputs change to also update the nodes so that, that you know, that I need a kind of an update system. Uh, and then over here I need to really put together a, a rendering queue. So this way I can tell it, okay, this one updated, render me this. And it goes in the queue, it renders, and then when it's done rendering, it then copies it back into the node preview. So there's still about quite a bit of things to do, um, but overall um, it's working really well. The UI really works really well. The UI is actually themable. I actually made it themable right now. So you can change the look very uh, differently. I just haven't created any other themes yet. Um, so far, this is the first theme is kind of built off shader blocks. <laughs> Not shader blocks, I'm sorry, uh, shader forge. But um, yeah, there, here you go. Here's the progress, here's, the, here's it is. And um, you know, some people have been cute talking with me about it. Um, I'm taking everyone's feedback into consideration. And um, hopefully after the next set of changes, uh, I'll probably be open for contributors to start adding in. Um, you know, they can, they can help me start building more nodes um, you know, because there's like tons of nodes, there's tons of functions in GSL. So that might be an area that people might be interested in. Um, maybe someone wants to create themes, uh, new themes. Um, maybe uh, so maybe there's a designer who wants to maybe come up with new themes or a different design look or um, different ways to kind of maybe add new nodes to the screen. Um, I still need to be able to uh, serialize all the information, deserialize it back. So like a way to basically save your sketch or your your, your shader and then um, roll it up again, things like that. There's there's quite a lot for shader blocks before it's ready for prime time. Uh, but for like right now, it's 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 starting out pretty good. So, uh, so not to make this video long, I'm probably just going to end it here. Uh, if you're really interested, please uh, like and subscribe. It, it will help me out because of the new YouTube things. And um, yeah, uh, happy coding. Uh, see you guys in the next video in the next progress.